All right, today we're going to talk about uh, multiplying and dividing rational expressions. And actually, some of this you might have looked at just briefly in Algebra 1, uh, but most of this will be pretty new here today. So, uh, typically with these problems, what we're going to need to do with every single one of these problems here, if possible, we're going to factor. Okay, so like looking here at this first example here, I notice here this binomial here in the denominator. Uh, we can uh, divide out a 3 or factor out a 3 from the denominator. So we're going to do that. We're going to uh, divide by 3. That's going to give us x minus 2 left over. And then in the numerator, we still have 3x. All right, and then since you have a 3 times something in the numerator, or I'm sorry, in the denominator, and a 3 times something in the numerator, we can cancel out these 3s. So we'll cancel those out. This is just now x, and then I guess uh, over x minus 2. All right, and this is the simplified expression. Now, there's a couple of other things here that we're going to have to do here. State any restrictions of the variables here. This is an extra thing that sometimes we need to look at here. And really what we're just doing is it's kind of like from yesterday's lesson. We're just uh, talking about the values that uh, where the domain doesn't exist. So we, we set the denominator here equal to 0. We go off to the side and do x minus 2 equals 0 and say x cannot be and that's the restriction on the domain. So here's your simplified version. Here's a restriction on your domain. And that's what you got to do on those there. Okay, with this next one here, this one's already all factored for us. So we're looking for a common binomial that's in the numerator and denominator. Um, so x minus 3 and x minus 3, those are going to cancel each other out. The reason we can cancel these out here is because up here in the numerator, everything's in terms of multiplication. We got this times this right here. And then in the denominator, this times this as well. So with uh, multiplication and division, technically, you can do those in any order that you want um, as long as you're not like adding or subtracting things beforehand. So uh, we can divide these two binomials right here before we multiply it all together. And that's why we can cancel them out. So if we can turn everything in terms of multiplication and division, that's when we can simplify these. So we'll just write the simplified version as x plus 1 and the x minus 2. Uh, now when you're restricting the domain, a lot of you guys might just use your result right here. Might use this right here and say, oh, x cannot be 2. But actually since we canceled out this minus 3 right here, we also have to take that in consideration. So we're going to say x cannot equal 3 as well. In the original problem, there would be a gap in the domain. So here's the simplified version. Here's your restrictions on your domain to the right. Okay. Uh, with this one here, it looks like there's nothing that we can cancel out on this one here. So you have uh, x plus 2, I guess, right there. Um, that's not the same exact binomial. Be careful. Some people might want to cancel out the 2 and the 4 right here. But there's parentheses implied right here around this top binomial. So nothing simplifies. This is actually simplified as we get but we still have a restriction on the domain. We're going to say that the domain, we cannot equal 3. Okay. Now 4 is the first one where everything's not factored for us. <coughs> Excuse me, a little sick here today. But anyways, uh, we need to go ahead and factor this one completely. Up in the numerator, we can factor out a common factor of 6. We'd be left with x minus 2. In the denominator here, this is actually a difference of squares. So this actually factors like so. x times x gets us x squared up here in front. Negative 2 and positive 2 gets us the negative 4 here in the back. And then we can cancel out those common binomials right there. And then I guess we can write our simplified form as 6 over x plus 2. And that's how you're going to leave it there. Now, as far as the domain restrictions, go back to your factored form before we cancel things out. Those are going to tell us the values that x cannot be. It's basically the opposite of your factors here. This is x cannot be 2 and x cannot be negative 2. So there's your simplified form. There's your restrictions. All right, next one. Same idea here. Uh, we got a trinomial up there in the numerator. So um, I guess we'll... Factor that, like this here. So essentially, you ask yourself, what well, multiplies the 4 and adds to a 5 right there. So that'd be x plus 4 and then and x plus 1. Okay, down in the denominator, that's a difference of squares. 
that'll be x minus 4 and then x plus 4. And you need to be really good at factoring here before you get to this lesson, so you might need to go backwards and uh, watch a few videos on that if you're a little shaky on that. So you cancel those out, your remainder, or I guess your leftover stuff here is x plus 1 and then x minus 4. And then your restricted values are these numbers here before you canceled out. So x cannot be positive 4 for that first one, and then the one that we canceled out, x cannot be negative 4. There you go. So not too bad once you do a few of them. Pretty much all going to be some type of variation of this right here. All right, this one factor the numerator. Pretty much every single one of these you need to factor somehow, some way, if it's not already factored. So up there in the numerator, I guess we can write this as x minus 4 and then x plus 2. All right, down in the denominator, x plus 5 and then x plus 2. Okay, and it looks like our x plus 2s are going to cancel out. We're going to be left with x minus 4 and then x plus 5. Domain restrictions, x cannot equal negative 5 and x cannot equal negative 2. And there you go. So once you do a few, they're not too bad. Okay, so now we're going to talk about what happens when you multiply two fractions. And it's got a lot of the same ideas here. Like, uh, actually, I'm going to start you out on something like this right here. Uh, so since we have a binomial of x minus 6 right here, that x minus 6 and this x minus 6 here, diagonal from one another, can cancel out. Same idea as if you had, for example, 3 over 5 times, I guess, 5 over 4. Diagonals, you can reduce those, right? Divide them both by 5, you get 1 and 1, and then you can say that this is 3 over 4. Same idea. If you got uh, binomials that, are, uh, that can cancel out diagonal from one another, you can just go ahead and do that. Now what's kind of weird about this one here is you have an x there and an x there. Those are actually going to cancel out as well. That's because they're being multiplied 3 times x and then x times this binomial right here. So the x's cancel out. And all you're going to be left with in the numerator once you multiply everything that's left over together is 3. Everything that's left over in the denominator, you have this x plus 3. And then you have this x minus 1. And then this is the simplified form of that. Right there, so you can cancel out these diagonal things here. And then domain restrictions will say x cannot be negative 3. x cannot be 6 because of this one that we canceled out earlier. And then x cannot be 1. And there's your domain restrictions. Now the whole reason I wanted to show you guys that problem first is because these ones here where you don't have binomials, everything's a monomial, these kind of get it a little tricky here just because there's so many things. Usually there's a coefficient, and then most of the times you'll have two, if not more than two, you know, two or three sets of variables that we got to worry about. So what I like to do on these here, my approach, is I cancel out the diagonals. I d divide them as much as I can. The uh, 3 and the 27, both of those are divisible by 3. 3 goes into 3 once, 20, uh, 3 goes into 27 nine times. Same thing with the other set of diagonals for the coefficients. You got 4 and 8. 4 goes into 4 once, and then uh, 4 goes into 8 twice. So when you multiply across, you're going to get 9, and then over 2 for your leading coefficients. Now with the x's and y's, you can kind of do the same thing, but I like to go ahead and just combine the x's in the numerator first. So that would be x cubed, once you add your powers, and then you don't have any other y's. And then down in the denominator, it looks like we're going to have x squared and then y cubed. Okay, and then after this here, what we're going to do is subtract your powers of x and y. So you have more x's in the top right here. So I'm going to leave, when you cancel them out, you got one left over in the top. And just subtract the powers, right? Uh, in the denominator here, you got more left over in the denominator. So when you subtract 3, 3 minus uh, 1, you have 2 left over. So we'll put y squared. And then that's your answer. This is simplified. So a lot more to worry about, actually, when they're monomials here. So just kind of be careful with your powers and everything. And we got another example here in just a second. Uh, as far as domain restrictions, we only have two variables. We have x and y. x and y, the only thing that we can really plug in for them that's going to make them 0 is going to be 0. So we're going to say the domain restrictions are 0 for each of these here. And then that's it on that problem. Okay, 
Uh, next one here, kind of the same idea here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and divide the diagonals. So think about 18 and 12. Uh, uh, 6 goes into both of those. 6 goes in 2 times the 12 and 3 times the 18. Same thing with 7 and 14. You can do 1 and 2 right there. So divide both by 7. Up there in the numerator when you multiply, you're going to get 6. In the denominator, you're going to get 2. And then I would just go add your powers of x. You got x cubed and then y to the fourth. I'm just adding my powers straight across here. Same thing in the denominator. We're going to have x to the fifth once I add, and then y squared. Now the 2 and the 6 actually wind up reducing even further, so we'll say that's 3 over 1. And then uh, let's see here, we have 3x cubed and then x to the fifth, so when I subtract my powers, I'll have 2 left over in the bottom. You have y to the fourth and y squared. We'll subtract the powers. You have y squared in the top when you're done right there. And then let's say x and y cannot be zero, just like the same reason before. Those would make the denominator zero. Those are your restrictions on your domain. So, all right. Um, you'll see more like these problems here where you got to cancel out your binomials here. The only thing is this numerator right here is not factored, so I'm going to go ahead and factor that real quick. So I'll write that as x minus 1, x plus 1, and all over x plus 1. And then we still have x plus 2, and then x minus 1, and then all over x minus 1. So go ahead and cancel out anything that's above or below each other. So you got an x minus 1 there, those diagonals can cancel. Got x plus 1, those diagonals can cancel. And then actually you're left with just x plus 2 and then x minus 1. And that is right there how I guess you could leave your answer. I guess if you wanted to get real fancy, you could foil your answer back together. Uh, but I don't think they're going to be asking for that on this question here. Yeah, look in here at my key. That's kind of what we got, I guess. Uh, just make sure you go back and get your domain restrictions. x cannot be negative 1. And x cannot be positive one actually. And then there you go. Okay. All right, some more multiplication here on this next page. Um, biggest misconception here, if you want to write this down here, is people think, oh, I can just cancel out there's a, the the x squares. I got one in the top and one in the bottom. But technically, there's implied parentheses here, and you have to add these first. Right, and then our way to get around that is actually factoring. So you have to factor everything. Make sure you factor as much as you can. Each problem, each uh, you know, numerator and denominator might factor a little bit differently, uh, but you do have to factor everything as much as possible so we can get everything in terms of multiplication. If we can do everything in terms of multiplication, then we can multiply and divide in any order that we want. So we'll start here with the top left right there. The way that factors, that's a common factor right there, you can factor out an x and then be left over with x plus 3. All right in the denominator I need something that multiplies the positive 2 and adds to negative 3. We could go x uh, minus 2 and actually x minus 1. All right in the numerator on the uh, top left that'll factor as x minus 2 and then x I guess plus 1. That should multiply to negative 2 and add to 1, or add to negative 1. And then down in the denominator, uh, that'll be x plus 3, and then x plus 1. And then there you go. So there's actually a lot of things that are going to cancel out here. Remember, things that are diagonal or above each other can cancel. So uh, x plus 3 and x plus 3 cancel there. x plus 1 and x plus 1 cancel there on the same fraction. And then this x minus 2 and this other x minus 2 cancel. So then all you're left with is x and then over x minus 1. Now if we're still listing out our domain restrictions, we're going to have a bunch of them here. It looks like we might have 4. x cannot be positive 2, positive 1, negative 3, and negative 1. There we go. So really, once again, this is more of our answer, but then domain restrictions are here to the right. So there you go. All right, let's try out another one here. Some more factoring. So factoring's pretty heavy on this. 
uh, numerator that factors as x minus 2 and x plus 2. That's a difference of squares. You need to be able to recognize those pretty quick. Usually they got two things, no middle term, and then a minus between them, and these have to be perfect squares. Okay, uh, over on the top right, I guess we can factor that. That'd be, uh, let's see here, that'd be minus 6 and plus 1 right there. All right, down in the denominator, that's a common factor problem. We can factor out a 2, and then we would be left with x plus 1. And then in, in the denominator here, uh, multiplies to 8, so that would be, uh, multiplies a positive 8, that'd be two negatives there. So negative um, 4, negative 2. And then there we go, we're ready to start canceling out. Uh, Let's see here, I guess you got an x minus 2 across from each other. Um, x plus 1 across from each other. And that one, that, that looks like that's it there. So I guess we're left with x plus 2, x minus 6, and then divided by 2, and then x minus 4. There you go, that's that answer there. Domain restrictions, x cannot equal negative 1, 4, and positive 2. And that's it. All right. So now you got division. Okay, division works exactly how it worked in middle school here. So I'll do a division problem here to the side. So like if we got a half divided by, I don't know, like a fourth or something like that. So remember in middle school, we wrote this down a lot. We wrote keep change flip and that's just a little thing here to help remember what you do with the fractions you keep the first fraction this the same you change the middle sign here to multiplication and then you flip it to the reciprocal fraction four over one so if you divide if you do a half divided by a fourth right here that actually comes out to yeah, two over one eventually which is two or you could even write it, I guess you could write it as 4 over 2, but that's going to come out to 2 over 1. So the big thing I want you guys to take away is keep, change, flip. So if you got a problem here with 13, dealing with a bunch of monomials, no binomials here. We're just going to keep the first fraction the same. you got to change to multiplication and then flip the second fraction. You can't cancel anything out until you do keep change flip. Let's go ahead and write that down first. And then we can start canceling out like the last problem. Look at your diagonal things here. I know 3 goes into 12. Um, 3 goes into 3 once. 3 goes into 12 four times. Uh, 4 and 5, you can't really do much with those. So I would just do 4 times 4. That's going to be 16 up in the front. 5 times 1 is going to be 5. Okay, and then add your powers across x cubed y to the fifth I'm just adding my powers y cubed y squared right there that adds up to 5 same thing in the denominator there's an implied power of 1 that'll be x cubed and then y squared okay. 16 over 5 doesn't reduce but some of the powers of uh, x and y can cancel out so 16 over 5 your x cubed since they're the same power if you subtract them you're left with 0 so you don't have to write them and then it looks like we're going to have three y's left over in the numerator once you subtract your powers. Okay, uh, I guess uh, if you wanted to get your domain restrictions, x cannot be 0, y cannot be 0. Just whatever variables you have there. So that is your simplified answer. Let's try another one here with some uh, monomials here. Same idea, keep, change, flip. Don't cancel anything out yet, you can't. In fact, if you do, you're going to get it wrong, so be careful. Okay. 8xy squared. All right, uh, diagonals, you can cancel out 8 in 32. 8 goes into 8 once, and then 8 goes into 32 four times. Uh, 3 in 21, you can cancel those out. 3 goes into 3 once. 3 goes into 21 uh, seven times. So that's actually just going to be 7 times uh, 4 up there in the numerator. That'll be 28. And then you can put 1 in the denominator for now. 
All right, powers of x, add your powers of x. Let's see x to the fourth and y to the sixth. So you add your powers of y to that too. Uh, powers of x in the denominator, one and one, so that's x squared, and then y to the third. All right, so then with this one here, when you simplify, you're actually going to get 28 x squared once you subtract your powers, and then y to the third. So this one actually simplifies down. It's not even a fraction anymore. Still got to put your original domain restrictions. So go and put x and y cannot be zero. All right, a couple more here with uh, more, I guess, uh, I guess bigger polynomials here. Keep change flip though. Uh, if you want to factor in this step, that probably wouldn't be a bad idea here. Let's go ahead and do that here. Let's factor, and then we'll flip. So uh, multiply is a negative 6. I guess we could say positive 3 and negative 2 right there. And then I'm going to change this middle sign, and then flip this second fraction. This will be x plus 3 up there in the numerator, and then 2x down in the denominator. So this one's kind of unique here because you got uh, monomials and binomials happening. So the binomial of x plus 3, those should cancel out. Okay, uh, the 2x and the 4x squared, just think about this here, 2 goes into 4 once, and then 2, two goes into, or I got, I'm sorry, 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 4 twice, and then with your powers of x, just subtract them. Just subtract them. If you have 1 right there, you'd have x to the first left over. You had 2x to the first left over, all in the numerator. And then down in the denominator, you just have 1 and 1 times, I guess, x minus 2, so... We can leave it like that right there. And then that would be your simplified answer. So that one's a little tricky there. Maybe you even put a star next to that just because it's got monomials and binomials. And you got to be kind of careful on those. All right, uh, domain restrictions. X cannot be 3. Or I'm sorry, negative 3. X cannot be 2. And then actually, since you have this monomial right here, you're going to say X could not be 0 as well. And that's how you leave that. So, yep, keep change flip, but then factor everything as well. And I kind of combined a few steps. I'll do the same idea here. I'm going to go ahead and factor and do keep change flip at the same time. Uh, first set of parentheses, I guess we can go x plus 5 on that, and then x minus 4. Uh, denominator, I guess, um, multiplies to negative 12. I guess let's go minus 4 and plus 3. All right, and then change, keep, there's my keep, change your sign, and then flip your last fraction. X minus 3 in the numerator, and then X plus 5 in the denominator. You can cancel out your diagonals, um, cancel those out, and then I guess we're just left with X minus 3 and X plus 3. Be careful, these aren't the same exact binomials, so these cannot cancel. So keep your answer like that. X, restrictions on domains, look at your original denominator after you did keep change flip. Uh, and that's going to be X cannot be 4, X cannot be negative 3, and then I guess X cannot be negative 5. And then that is it. And then actually, you know what, now that I think about this here, uh, we have to also keep in mind here, there's a number that would make that original denominator zero, so actually we need to say x cannot be positive 3 as well. I just realized that there. So actually, before you flip it here, you need to look at this bottom of the fraction as well, so the 5 right there, by whatever you're dividing by there in that case. So that messes up your domain restriction. Honestly, uh, that type of concept might not come up too much on like a regular test, maybe like a, a challenging SAT question, maybe a pre-AP test, um, but something along the lines of that there. So you got to be kind of careful on those. But anyways, if you can get the x minus 3, x plus 3, that's really the, the big takeaway that you need to do today. All right, uh, 17, kind of the same idea. This one's got a lot of factor in that we're going to have to do. So let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and just factor everything first, and then we'll do the keep change flip. 
So let's see here, this is minus 3, x minus 2 up there in the numerator. We have uh, x minus 6, x minus 2 in the denominator. And then we're, we're going to keep it as division just for a second, just so we don't do too much in one step. This will be x plus 4, and then x minus 3. Let me make that look a little bit better. And then in the denominator, that's actually a common factor problem. You can factor out x, and then you'd be left with x minus 6. So right away here, before we flip here, we know x cannot be... 6 right here because of this, and then also x cannot be 0. Alright, because those would be the bottom of these fractions here. So make sure to write those down, and then we'll go get the rest of them here in a second. So I'm just going to rewrite all this here. Actually, I'm going to be lazy. Let's do copy, paste. There we go. So there's that first one. Change, and then flip your second fraction. Honestly, you could probably skip that step. And that would be fine, but I didn't want to do too much in one step, so you guys weren't confused. And then let's go cancel out what we can cancel out. Minus 2's cancel out. Minus 6. X minus 6 cancels out. Uh, X minus 3 cancels out as well. And then you're just left with X over X plus 4. Okay. Now go relook at the rest of your domain restrictions here. You need to be kind of careful on this. So you had minus 6. Right there, so that would be positive 6, which we already canceled. You had this minus 2 here, so that would be positive 2. X cannot be positive 2. Uh, X cannot be negative 4. And X cannot be positive 3 for these denominators right there. So there's five restrictions on the domain. Bunch of them there, but there you go on that. All right, one more here. Okay. I guess what makes this problem the hardest here is this is not as easily factorable. 2x squared plus 7x minus 4. I'm going to go off to the side here. This is one of the techniques. I teach divide and slide, if you've seen that a few times. We multiply these numbers. Figures that we, need, we need to figure out, I guess, what multiplies to negative 8 and then adds to 7 here in the middle. So I guess we could say positive 8 and negative uh, 1 right there. And then we write it as x plus 8, x minus 1, and then we divide by the number out in front. So this will be x plus 4. And then the second one is 2x minus 1 once you do the slide part. And if you need a recap on doing that, watch some other videos and check that out. I call it divide and slide. So that's how that numerator factors right there x plus 4, 2x minus 1. Now I think everything else is going to factor real clean, so we'll be okay. Uh, this one here will be x minus 3, and then x minus 3. Okay, second one, I'm going to do keep change flip here all at the same time. So this denominator here, once I factor, I'm going to put it up here in the numerator. And that would be x plus 4 and x minus 3. Okay, and then now this numerator, this old numerator, is going to be my new denominator once I factor. And I think that's x plus 4 and x plus 4. All right, and then let's cancel out what we can. x plus 4 is uh, one set of x minus 3s. Cancel, you cannot cancel this last one here because you need to cancel them out in pairs. So be careful on that. I got an x plus 4 out there in the front, so I believe this is all 2x minus 1, then over x minus 3. Now, restrictions on the domain. Of course, your denominators here. x cannot be 3. x cannot be 3. We're not going to write that twice. x cannot be 4, or I'm sorry, negative 4. And then remember, the numerator right here was the old denominator so we need to look at those factors as well so that would be x cannot be 3 and x cannot be 4 as well so we're good to go on that so this is fully simplified right there with your domain restrictions and that is it here for today